Welcome uh, everyone uh, at this webinar powered by uh, IOF uh, 2020. Uh, my name is uh, Gerben Splinter of uh, Wageningen Economic uh, Research and I will be your uh, moderator uh, for today. Um, as some of you might know, we carried out some uh, webinars in the past and you can all find them on the, our website on uh, iof2020.eu slash education. And um, like we did before, please mention uh, that also this webinar will be uh, recorded, already mentioned by my colleague Daoud in the, in the chat. Um, so just a short uh, explanation uh, of, uh, of IOF uh, 2020 before we kick off uh, this, uh, this webinar. Uh, IOF 2020, uh, Internet of Food and Farms is a, a 30 million uh, EU project uh, that validates uh, innovative IoT solutions uh, for the agri-food sector uh, on a large uh, scale test sites all over Europe. The project uh, brings over 120 partners uh, ranging from uh, software providers and equipment manufacturers over research institutes to uh, agricultural producers and processors uh, together. IOF uh, 2020 supports uh, the development, uh, validation and market entry of digital service innovations for farmers and the processing industry all over Europe and helps building innovation uh, accelerating ecosystem. Um, so uh, this webinar today uh, we uh, present is about digital marketing uh, for, uh, for Agri Food Tech. Um, we like to uh, give you some insights uh, on digital marketing methods in the agricultural uh, sector. Uh, thank you for joining us uh, uh, today and of course I uh, will not be hosting this webinar uh, on my own. Um, we have uh, a perfect uh, expert uh, joining us uh, today who will tell you something more about this topic. Um, at first uh, the topic will be introduced uh, uh, further by uh, Bastian uh, uh Bastian uh, is the owner of uh, Livestock Robotics and he is also a member of the distribution support team uh, of the IOF uh, 2020 project. Uh, next up is our uh, uh, key speaker uh, expert for today. It's uh, Ebo van der Broek. Uh, Ebo is active as a senior marketeer at a company called uh, Battevire Bende and also Agrimedia. In recent years, uh, he collected a lot of marketing experience at several companies in the IT business. In his presentation, he will explain how content marketing can be used uh, to reach uh, farmers. Um, also joining us today is my colleague, as mentioned, uh, Daoud Urdu. Uh, Daoud is the organizer of this uh, uh, webinar series. And normally we also will be having Marian Bogus with us, uh, another colleague uh, for the technical part. But uh, Daoud is, is also doing the techniques uh, for today. Um, at the end, we have probably I think 20 minutes left for questions and answers, the Q&A part. And uh, it works uh, uh, like, uh, like this uh, in this webinar. We have, uh, we have some rules. Some of you know them already uh, from previous webinars we, uh, uh, we had in the, in the past. Uh, um, yeah, please uh, join us uh, uh, by, uh, by muting uh, your, your audio. Um, if you have any questions, uh, you can ask them already uh, uh, during the presentation and uh, use the, the chat function uh, to do so. Um, uh, it's, it's already uh, uh, available for you uh, when presentations are started uh, to, to use the chat uh, function. Um, furthermore, uh, I think we're scheduled till about 10.45 uh, Central European time. Um, so now I give the mic uh, to uh, uh, Bastian, who will kick off uh, this, uh, uh, this webinar. Uh, please, uh, Bastian, uh, go ahead. Thanks, uh, Herman, for the introduction. Um, and hello, everybody. Welcome to this IOF webinar. Uh, the topic of today, digital marketing for the agri-food uh, sector. And then, uh, now, my name is Bastian, as you know or heard. Uh, I am a member of the distribution support team of uh, IOF's uh, WP4. Um, and in our team, we try to support the use cases within IOF uh, to get their products out to the market and general, generate sales. So uh, validate the business model, uh, make sure um, you know how to distribute your products, find your customers. Um, and then, especially in the last months, due to the COVID crisis, uh, it became pretty difficult to meet these customers. 
Um, normally, you would go to a fair or an exhibition with your company and your products, and then you you have them visiting around, uh, looking at your stuff, uh, and you can talk to them and generate interest in your products. But all of that was more or less cancelled. Uh, people are a bit cautious to meet others, each other. So how can we now get the stuff out? Farmers are out on their farms. You are in your office uh, or even at home doing your work. But how can we meet your clients? Um, and that raised the question, how can we or how should we still reach out to our customers in these times? Is there maybe some digital way? And uh, how should we do this? Uh, myself as well, I also found myself challenged by these questions. Um, and I didn't have the solution yet. So it led us to the search for somebody to guide us on this journey that uh, tells us how is this domain of digital marketing working? How does it work? How can we maybe even do sales there? Um, and to share this knowledge also with you, we organized this webinar. So you can also take advantage of it. And uh, for this journey through the world of digital marketing, uh, we found an excellent guide which is Ebo van der Broek. As uh, Gerben already told, he has a background in marketing. Um, and from that, he collected a lot of experience uh, on how to do marketing, uh, in what ways can you reach out to customers, especially in the digital domain. So he knows a lot about this and he will explain to us in this story, uh, how can we use this in general, but also to reach farmers. Uh, so giving us some background knowledge, what is relevant, what do we need? but also a guideline, uh, how can we implement this in our own work? Um, that's it for me, Abo. Thanks for presenting today. And uh, the floor is yours. Thank you, Bastian. Um, let me share the screen. Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Thank you, Gerben and Bastian. Um, digital marketing in the agri-tech food world. Uh, let me split. One second. Um, today I'm going to talk about uh, today we're going to talk about uh, uh, marketing, content marketing, uh, the content marketing canvas, and uh, in the end uh, there will uh, be uh, the option to uh, answer questions or ask questions um, but I will first uh, start with a small introduction of myself um, and so who am I my name is Abel van der Broek I'm a senior marketeer at Agri Media and Batavira Bende uh, and I have over 20 years of uh, experience in the marketing and in the digital world um, I've, uh, I've I've been working with several IT companies uh, in, in, in several marketing functions, project functions, sales functions, uh, and currently living in Arnhem in the Netherlands, and I'm a dad of three kids. Uh, I love to play field hockey and cycling. And uh, I do have a little agricultural background since both my father and my mother were raised at a farm. Um, but they both uh, left the farm. So, and my uncle is at the moment the only farmer left in the in the family, uh, and he's he's uh, six, uh, 65 and he will uh, quit his farm shortly. So that leaves uh, me, uh, leaves the family, uh, well, without any agricultural uh, business uh, within the yeah, within the family but uh, we do have a background uh, i think as most of the people in holland do have somewhere great something about agri media agri media is a, a publisher uh, we have magazines in the agricultural sector um, we have nine magazines um, with a focus on both tech and animal um, Maybe uh, some people in the Netherlands have heard about it. Uh, we have uh, for animals, we have uh, the goat uh, howder. Uh, we have uh, Elite, which is focusing on, on, uh, on the, the, the new farmer. Um, and we have some technical um, magazines uh, like Landbouwmechanisatie and Tuin and Park Technique um, and Veehouderij Technique, which focus on, um, on, on the farmer. Uh, besides the uh, magazines, we also have events and training days. 
Uh, and we all do this with uh, uh, the, the, the tech knowledge to make you better. So we are a publisher that try to uh, uh, inform and to educate our readers. Um, on the other end, I'm also working for Batavirenbende. Uh, Batavirenbende is a content marketing agency, uh, which is actually a sub-brand of AgriMedia. Uh, it was established in 2019 um, with a full focus on agri-marketing. Um, what we uh, found out at AgriMedia is that uh, the uh, that we that we are le selling less and less. Um, uh, advertorials and that there is a shift in, in the way advertising is done um, where uh, content is becoming more and more relevant and knowledge is becoming more and more relevant for our uh, advertisers and for the readers. Um, I've also noticed this change uh, in, in the IT sector and my colleagues at AgriMedia and Batavira Band who also uh, come from other spaces around uh, agriculture um, notice there is a shift in marketing trends and we think that with Batavira Bende we can apply these shifts to the agricultural sector. Good, we have a mission, uh, we want to help companies in the agricultural sector to determine, reach, convince and retain their target group in the most creative and effective way through the use of modern content marketing strategies and techniques. So today I'm going to talk about those modern ways of content marketing strategies and techniques. Um, so hopefully at the end of the day, uh, you will have a short idea of how to reach the farmer in a new modern way uh, where the fair is indeed, uh, as Bastian said, uh, not one of the things anymore. Besides uh, content marketing, we talk a lot about agri-marketing. Um, if you are on LinkedIn, it, I might advise you to follow the hashtag agri-marketing because uh, uh, it will show you uh, ways and it will inform you on uh, by a lot of companies around the world where uh, what new ways to reach the customer are. So then what is marketing? Um, I, you see digital marketing, content marketing, one-on-one, B2B, social, inbound, outbound, Facebook, et cetera, et cetera. Um, there is a lot of different talk about marketing, but in the end, it is just all marketing. Um, if you really look at the definition at Wikipedia, um, uh, there is a lot of, uh, difference in the definitions. Actually, there's not just one definition of marketing. Uh, it has changed throughout the years and it has, is cha has changed by perspective from different uh, gurus who know a lot about marketing. And um, if I look at the definition um, uh, as it's stated at the moment, um, I think that there are a few points that are clear for marketing. Marketing is about adding value uh, to the customer and to your company. Uh, marketing is about getting to the market and getting the market. Uh, I know that a lot of people think about marketing is about creating PowerPoints. Uh, marketing is about supporting sales in doing their business. It's one way to look at it. Um, it's about understanding the customer and uh, I think it's about generating leads. Having all these things uh, put together um, we see a shift in marketing and we see that marketing is expanding. A lot of people uh, think also um, that advertising is marketing. Well, actually it is not. Advertising is communication and it's one of the key things that can be used within marketing. Um, and where marketing used to be very outbound, meaning that you send to your customer and you send uh, your message throughout the world. Um, the shift that is happening is that it's becoming more and more inbound. Um, there are, well, as you all probably know, a lot of uh, influences at the moment. Uh, and if you, if you just walk to the store, uh, you will uh, get a lot of impressions uh, and it's all marketing, it's all commercial. So there has to be a way to stand out. So uh, with 
the chains of uh, people doing uh, their search to for a new business, their search for, uh, for before they want to buy something, um, that has also changed by the digital world. And it became content marketing as a new way of connecting with your customer. So we think at Battafira Bende, and not only at Battafira Bende, but it's quite a common sense that uh, there is a new approach of doing marketing. And there is a new way of getting to your customer. As Bastian said, the fair is not there anymore. Well, it will return. But then again, um, you should question what is the way you want to communicate with your client and what is the story you want to tell. Um, we think it's about content marketing. So what is content marketing? Content marketing is a strategic marketing approach focusing on creating and distributing valuable, relevant and consistent content to attract, retain and clever, clearly defined audience and ultimately to drive profitable customer action, which of course the last one is uh, making a sale. This is uh, the definition uh, stated by the Content Marketing Institute. It is uh, actually meaning it's not about a ship, it's about the adventure, uh, it's about freedom, it's about the travel, uh, it's uh, the, 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 uh, the, the, the urge to go to the sea or whatever. But content marketing is not about I'm going to sell you a ship, no, I'm going to sell you an adventure. Um, yesterday I was talking with a client and he is not selling a machine to clean up the, the, the streets and, and remove the weed. No, he's selling clean streets. Um, it's, not about the, it's not about the paint on the wall. It's about the, the feeling that the painting on the wall gives. And that is what content marketing is all about. And that is the way that in the modern world you can reach and attract and get to your customer. But then I have to admit, content marketing is not a new thing. So I will show you a short a movie and um, about the history of content marketing. Okay, well, uh, I understood you could not hear the sound. Um, what, uh, it, 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 what it shows is that content marketing is not new. Um, as 
I, I want to pick out two uh, short names which came by uh, came along in the in the in the movie, and maybe you saw them. Maybe it was just uh, uh, past. And uh, but first one was uh, John Deere, which is actually the first customer magazine. Uh, John Deere, uh, known by the by the tracker and uh, and 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 uh, the the machines in the agricultural sector. Um, they in uh, 1895 they launched a magazine called the Furrow, uh, which is in the in in the beginning the maybe one of the first uh, things that we can identify as content marketing. The Furrow was helping farmers in the United States to become a better farmer. And yes, they had to use had to to use the uh, machines from John Deere, but yet it was uh, about helping the farmer. Another one, uh, which is a quite nice example of what can, how market content marketing can contribute to your sales is the GI Joe, which also came along uh, in, the, in, the, in the short movie. Um, GI Joe, uh, the, 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 the toy uh, by Marvel. Uh, at first, the toy was there, but the GI Joe puppet was never sold. It was not a success. Then later on, uh, there was a comic uh, created about G.I. Joe and the comic books were sold very good. And well, the warehouse is stuffed with all the G.I. Joes finally uh, got empty. So did, you see that creating something around uh, the comic, uh, around uh, your uh, product can create sales. So that is actually what uh, what content marketing is about okay, but then how uh, do you get from well uh, how do you get away go away from your from your product and how do you get your potential customer ultimately become a client this is a route um, from uh, the customer journey uh, also known as a funnel where you first have uh, to capture uh, the unknown uh, people. Um, there is, of course, uh, at the moment, especially I think for a lot of uh, uh, companies currently watching this webinar, um, there is an ocean of unknown uh, both ways. Uh, your customer does not know you yet and you don't know your customer yet. Um, so there has to be a way to to capture your uh, your your unknown customer. So you want to focus with content because uh, um, yes, fairs are important and trade shows are important. But the best way at the moment to get connection with customers is using uh, the internet. Uh, people search on Google. People go to websites. People visit uh, YouTube. So this is where you, the first, the journey of something starts. So this is where you should also trigger your, uh, and capture a potential clients. So you do that by focusing on content. So you create awareness. Uh, maybe some of you, maybe all of you know the old uh, uh, marketing adagium, uh, AIDA, attention, interest, desire, action. Well, that has, evolved and at the moment uh, one of the uh, things is that the ACTA awareness consideration decision advocacy so first you have to create awareness you have to capture the potential customer then after you have the awareness someone will consider the uh, consider your product and uh, your your service and you have to make sure that you keep connection with that potential customer. So you have to nurture him or her. Um, you will do that by, after you have captured someone, you will try to get an email address or a phone number or something. So you can send something new, so you can get the connection. After that, uh, the customer will go to a, a phase of decision. Will I go left? Will I go right? Will I buy your product? Yes or no? And once a customer is a customer, uh, it's very important to keep them loyal and retain their uh, business and expand 
their uh, knowledge and, and uh, love for your product. So we first start, we focus on content and throughout the funnel, we come at the moment where we have to focus on the product. Um, and this is a very important uh, distinction. When you capture people, you're not going to talk about, if you have a product, you're not going to talk about how powerful your engine is. You should not talk about how great your product is. The first thing you want to talk about is how does your product help? How does your company, how does your service help your potential customer? What is the unaware problem that they have? As uh, Henry Ford once said, if I would have asked people what they want, they would have said faster horses. But he built a car. The uh, iPhone is about getting known what the customer wants but it's also about helping them go to the next level. And your product, I assume your product, your service is also helping people to go to the next level. And that is the story you want to tell. That is the story you need to tell to your customers. So if you are talking to your customer on a fair, in a, uh, on, a, on the web, um, it is important to know that you have to uh, focus first on knowledge. My excuse uh, for some Dutch slides sometimes, uh, but some slides I could not really change. So, But in the awareness uh, phase, when people are unknown, you have to focus on knowledge. Um, you have to write blogs. Maybe you go to a magazine. You will visit a fair. You will do some print ad. You can become a knowledge partner for a magazine, you can do social media. It is about brand preference and experience, and you focus on knowledge, share what you know, focusing on the thing that you are building or selling or the service that you have. Um, it is what is the additional benefit. Uh, it's about addition, editing value to your product for the customer. Once somebody goes to consideration, you can go to the product sheet. You can send him more detailed information. You can send him a case study. You can send him a testimonial, maybe a video. Um, then after that, you will go to a product demo, maybe a factory visit, a compare tool, compare tool. Uh, so it is all about getting to the next level with your customer. And I think this is one thing that is very important. Do not talk about what you make, talk about what you make possible. So remember that it's not about your product, it's about what can your product do for your potential customer. So this is all the theory. And what uh, we have done at Batavirebende is we have created a content marketing canvas. And with that content marketing canvas, uh, you'll have a, a easy setup, um, an easy canvas, which you can fill out and get to your story and finally create your strategy around content marketing. And I think that uh, it, it is one thing that, especially now with the trade shows uh, and the fairs not being around, um, just starting to do something on marketing should not be the way. Um, you should have a strategy, uh, you should have a focus, and you should have a good idea of how you want to reach your customer and with what, what story you want to reach it. So there is the content marketing canvas. Um, again, sorry, this one is in Dutch, um, but on the left side, uh, you'll see uh, a merk, which is actually your brand. And your brand contains of DNA. Who are you? What is your brand? What are your goals? And what is your promise of the brand? What do you want to do? Uh, with Simon Sinek uh, saying, uh, you have the why, the how, and the what. And you have to start with the why. What is your internal, uh, yeah, your internal approach? Why do you want to tell? Why did you make the, uh, uh, your product? What is your, 
your vision? What is your thing? What, why do you want to be there? And why do you think you have something for your customer? And then below brand on the left, we have the market. What are the trends? Who, who is your target group? Who is your competition? And not only look at the competition in a way at the product, but also how does your competition position it, itself on the, on the market? And we go to the value proposition. And with that, you go to a story. And on the right side, you have the more enhanced uh, part of content marketing, which is what kind of uh, stories do you tell? How do you tell it? What kind of, uh, do you make a movie? Do you make a blog? Do you make um, something else? And then how do you distribute it? So I will go now deeper in each part of it. First one is brand. So as I said, the DNA, who are you? What makes you unique? How do you position yourself? What are your goals? What are your promises? And on the other end, we have the market. So what is, uh, what is the trends in the market? Where it is going? And uh, I, of course, we see a lot of robotics coming up. We see, uh, we see uh, the, the precision farming doing a lot of things, but there is also a lot of other things. We have one customer at Batavira Bender who is, um, who is working with uh, creating machines to um, to create bales? And we found out that that a, the competition is not just the other companies who is make who are making bales, but in the in the Netherlands we also have uh, the, the the haystacks, which is a competition for the bale. It's another way of silage. So it's another way of 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 thinking. Hey, what are they doing? So if you look at the market and if you look at your competition don't look just at other products look at other ways to solve the problem that you are solving so you get a full focus on what you do and then if you have that you have both your own dna and you have your market you can change to the value proposition canvas so this is actually not a model that we have created this is a known model uh, it's by alexander osterwalder um, and he has created this as something uh, as a bigger it's from the bigger part as the, uh, the business uh, value canvas which is saying okay and maybe all the startups uh, have used it um, and if you have not it might be an idea to look into it because uh, it is helping you to uh, get uh, more insight in, in in your company and in your product and especially the value proposition canvas is helping you. You should look at this one from the right to the left. So you start with the customer job. Within your uh, market trends and the target group, you define, uh, especially the target group, you define who is buying your product. And it's not always the one who is actually paying. It's not always the person who is actually signing off the contract. We have a lot of uh, products bought especially in the business to business world there are a lot of people involved in the buying process some are the ones who have to say okay here is my signature and done deal but there are also influencers for the buying the the, the person who finally signs off the contract so it's important to know what are the customer jobs to be done what are the things that each buyer has to do uh, each each buyer persona someone will be driving a tracker so he will have another wishes he has another thing to do he has to make sure that all the grass is is in in the house before the rain starts uh, that he has to make sure that the cattle uh, is is safe um, but on the other hand you have uh, someone who has to make sure that he wants to uh, he has 10 people working for him and he has to make sure that they all get their job and he has other needs, another job to be done. And within those customer jobs, there are pains. What is the pain that they're facing? What is the things that they hate about their job? What are the things that they dislike? And then they also have gains. What are the things that make them share? What may, are the things that then make them proud? What are the things that they say, yes, we've done it. That is the customer part. On the other side, we have products and services. 
products and services focus on your product, your services. And how does it create the gain? How does it help for the customer job to create the gains? And where are your pain relievers? The customer has pains in his jobs. And we were talking with a customer last night, uh, last week, and they were saying, okay, our customers work on cemeteries and they have relative small paths that they have to pass. Their pain reliever is in the, in, in, in contrary of a lot of other companies who have the same focus, their machine is just smaller. That's a pain reliever. It helps them. And if you have finally set up a value proposition canvas, and this is something that is, this can take a day, it can take two days, but you should really, if the better you do this one, and the more detailed you do this one, the better you get to the next part of the canvas. And that's your story, jouw verhaal. What are you going to tell? Which are the, the, the things that you want to tell in the surroundings of your product? Hey, Bo, you just have uh, some five minutes left. So can you try, please try to uh, wrap it up a little I will, bit? I will, uh, yes, I will speed up. Um, then you have the content calendar. Uh, you look at what kind of content do you want to create? You can create small content, you can, can create big content, uh, but it, all content have different angles and different ways of helping the people out. And then maybe the one that you all want to hear today is how to reach the farmer. Uh, well, your website, I think that there are different channels. You can have, you have earned channels, paid channels, you have owned panels. Uh, channels, I'm sorry. An own channel is your website, is your Facebook page, is your uh, Instagram, is your LinkedIn. But make sure that you get all those channels leading towards your website, because there you can create landing pages. That is your hub, and there you can stay in control. You're not in control of people on Facebook. So then you have also online CEO and CEA. Uh, CEO, search engine optimization. It's creating text and your website to be found by Google. And SEA, search engine advertising, is just the buy at the Google. You have social media. You have traditional print. Do not forget about the traditional print. It is within the agricultural sector one of the main uh, things that people use. Every farmer is reading at least two magazines, and they read it well. They like them. So find out if you want to target to your farmer, which farmer do you need? What do you need a pig farmer? Do you need a chicken or do you need cattle? Make sure that you have the right focus. Find out what traditional print magazines there are in the different countries and try to get in those print things. And not just with a advertising, but try to search for ways to get on their websites, get to their newsletter, get into their um, into their stream of information to make sure that uh, they can help you to reach the customer. And then on that end, you have to make a story where they go back to your website. Try to get their email address to so you can send out a newsletter and you can get the connection. And don't forget the trade fairs, but do get email addresses, do get an up in so you can stay in connection with the customer. Okay, I have some uh, examples of great uh, uh, job uh, companies who've done great things, but I will skip them. Um, so I will urge one for more thing. Do not talk about what you make possible. Uh, what you make, do talk about what you make possible. That's, I think, the key element of content marketing. It's about uh, telling stories, uh, in the surroundings of your product and make sure that uh, the people uh, will, will get your information. Okay, I will skip the last uh, videos I had uh, with some great examples. Uh, and I will, um, yeah, if there are any questions, I think uh, we could uh, do them now. Thank you very much, uh, Abo, for your interesting uh, presentation. And indeed, uh, a first question already came in uh, by uh, by chat. And uh, if other people like to ask Abo a question, please use the chat uh, to ask uh, 
a question. Uh, the first question is asked uh, uh, by Matteo Meta of the University of Pisa. Uh, as you can see in the chat, uh, Ebo, he asks, yes. uh, which digital tools do you suggest uh, for the value proposition of uh, small scale farmers who sell good food? Considering that uh, they usually have limited time, limited specialized digital skills, a lot of skills and knowledge for other responsibilities and tasks, and limited resources to invest in digital tools and a low division of uh, works in their team. Could you uh, give a, any a suggestion uh, on this question uh, by Matteo? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, uh... I think I think um, that uh, tools like uh, um, so, yeah, it's, it's mostly social media and setting up a Facebook page um, and, and make sure that you uh, get uh, people around you. Uh, make sure that buyers um, from your small goods uh, put a, put a little tag on uh, a paper within every cell you make and 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 put your facebook uh, or your uh, twitter account on it uh, your your um especially uh, uh, your your uh, <laughs> come on i'm sorry i'm sorry i just forgot the name of the stupid uh uh your uh, it will come back to me instagram <laughs> sorry mm -hmm. i always forget instagram but it's then maybe TikTok. But if tell people that you are around and it will um, and, and ask people to tell other people. So what you should do is if you don't have time, if you have, don't have digital skills, if you don't have uh, if you have other things to do, try to make the uh, your bias your ambassadors. So ask people, do you like my good? Do you like the things that I sell to you? But also, can as I can understand, make use of easy, accessible tools like you just mentioned, uh, which yeah, are available for, for a lot of people and easy, accessible yeah. and easy to easy to yeah. use. You, and you can easy use, easily use your smartphone. And when you walk around uh, your farm and you, you make three, four photos and you share them and the next mm -hmm. day you do it again and uh, just make sure that you keep on going uh, on, on those small digital uh, parts. Make sure you have a website uh, um, and make sure that, that people can keep hearing about you. And, and it's not always about being the most interesting, uh, but it's about also about telling the right story. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, hopefully this uh, suits your question, uh, uh, Matteo. And um, um, if other people like to ask a question, please uh, please do so. Um, I have a question coming in now from uh, from uh, from Bastian, and uh, uh, I can see Matteo says uh, thank you very much. So, um, all right, yes. uh, you're welcome, uh, Matteo. Bastian, Bastian is asking, and then uh, how often should you do this? Uh, how much time should you spend on this? So, yeah, he's regarding to the last question and your answers. How often should you do this? How much time uh, do you have to spend on this? Uh, it, it, how much time you spend on a on a platform is is, is um, it, it, it depends. Um, I think that that being around uh, once a week for a small company is more than more more than enough. Um, creating a blog uh, on your website where you tell stories. Uh, if you do that, maybe uh, once once in a month, it should be enough. So uh, maybe you should spend two, three hours to write something about what you've been doing. Maybe you should keep a diary and, and, and do a weekly diary on your website. Um, one of our, the brands from Agi Media is uh, Landbouwmechanisatie. And we had a podcast uh, running last year from a company who was creating a new kind of tracker. And there was a podcast around that. So, but the podcast making, creating the podcast was not that difficult. Um, and look at today, setting up a, a, a webinar. It is, yeah, you have to put energy and time in it, but it's a lot of value and there's a lot of uh, additional uh, buzz going around. So how much time should you spend? It depends on the channel. 
and it depends on uh, on, on, on the, the amount of followers. Uh, don't make it a daytime job. Uh, your daytime job is selling and uh, creating your product or your service. Um, okay. Do this, it can be done within, I think, if you spend two hours a week, it's more than enough. Yeah. So, um, yeah, a lot of things can be done by the people themselves by using uh, uh, Instagram, uh, Facebook, Twitter, et cetera, et cetera. Um, when do parties and uh, consultants like you come in? Uh, uh, at, at what time? Uh, th that would be my question. Uh, yeah. Um, well, that, that depends. Um, we, we can come in any time you want, uh, actually. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, I think it is important, as I stated in the in the presentation, that uh, in the beginning you should have a strategy. And you should start with what do I want to tell, and mm -hmm. if you what you want to tell, um, then uh, there is the, the the next part is 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 crea actually creating the content. And I've seen a lot of companies go wrong there. They start with a strategy, but then they have two, three blocks. Uh, they put five pictures on, on an Instagram account and then it stops. Um, but that's not, I think, uh, that's, that is the hardest thing to keep going on. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, that, uh, it's not, that's not something for, uh, for me, but there are companies and also Battafire uh, that can help with creating content and keep that going on. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, and then it depends on how much money you want to spend on marketing, how much uh, effort you want to put into that. Um, I right. think that I, I, I used to, as I said, I used to work in IT, and uh, I, I've, I've worked in IT companies where um, actually I think between seven and fifteen percent of all budget was going to marketing. So yeah, that's I think for a startup company it should be less. It could be less, but. Um, if you want to do marketing on a larger scale, you should think about that. All right, thank you. Um, other questions yeah, still coming in. Uh, the, the, the one is yeah. asked by my colleague uh, Daoud. He is asking what are the criteria and decision steps uh, when translating mm -hmm. a business model canvases to content, and how do you decide that it is going to be a newsletter, or for instance, uh, for example? Yeah. Okay. Or, some, uh, or something else. The, the criteria and decision steps, uh, translating the business model confess to content, um, it's if you uh, set up the, the, the pains and the gains uh, for, for your uh, customer jobs to be done, um, actually you will see uh, if, you, if you write them down well and you get, you will, maybe you will see a list of, 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 uh, of, of, of blog titles appear. Uh, so uh, you you see a a list of of uh, of of subjects that you can talk about with your customer. Um, so it is about okay you 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 are uh, a, 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 a farmer and you're looking for a new tracker and uh, tractor and you uh, one of the th pain things within a lot of tractors is that you cannot look up uh, because there is a roof on the tracker. Um, so maybe you have a bigger, a bigger glass. So that is something to tell about. Don't say, oh, we have more windows in our cabin on the tracker. No, but we have a better view. Well, we have the option for you to look everywhere. So you create that uh, canvas and then you see, uh, yeah, stories appear. So that's how you do it. And then how do you decide to be the newsletter or something else? Uh, I think a newsletter should always be there. And maybe once a month, maybe one, uh, maybe uh, twice, once uh, bi-monthly. Uh, but um, you get your, your, uh, your, your blogs. And maybe you can add, add, uh, add some pictures. You can, of course, you can add a product. Maybe you will be visiting a fair. So you have a lot of content and you put that in a newsletter. Uh, but Okay. I think you should start with logging and getting everything on your own hub. I see a lot of other questions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. But Min is asking, are there any platforms uh, business no. you'd avoid? Yeah, so you'll already be talking about platforms like Instagram and Twitter and uh, et cetera, et cetera, or maybe prefer <laughs> some platforms to use. Could you tell something more about that? What is in your opinion? Yeah. 
Um, well, preferable, I would always have an own website. Create your own website. So make sure mm -hmm. that that is content hub. Um, okay. And avoid, hmm, not really. It depends on who is your audience? Who do you want to reach? Uh, uh, so do not avoid a, a digital print, uh, do not avoid a print magazine because it is read by your audience. Do not avoid TikTok if you think that your users are there. Although I don't think that a lot of farmers are on TikTok, but they are on uh, they are on Instagram. They are less on LinkedIn, but they do they are on Facebook. So yeah, you should not really avoid uh, platforms, uh, but uh, I think that 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 Facebook, uh, print, and your own website should be the three ones that you. Uh, the platforms that you should focus on. Okay, thank you. I'm uh, coming to the question asked by um, Michael Paul Kramer in just a moment, uh, because maybe the next question asked by Alexander Berlin is also about this topic, uh, because he asks, uh, as many farmers are not yet digital, how can I reach the farmers online and generate trust uh, specifically for my tech solution and in times uh, of a pan, uh, pan, uh, pandemic uh, taking the fears away? Uh, how do I handle the different languages of my potential clients? Um, I'm, I'm not sure, uh, Alexander, what you mean by different languages. Do you actually mean that you are uh, uh, the language uh, spoken? So it's German, French, yeah, English? I, prob I, yeah, I okay. probably think he, mean, he, mean, he means yeah. that uh, well. Yeah. Exactly, the European, uh, for instance, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. customers in, with all the different languages. Um, yeah, well, do not underestimate how uh, digital the farmers are. A lot of uh, farmers are indeed, thank you, Alexander. A lot of farmers are indeed uh, online and are digital. And it's been, because uh, um, the, the, the agricultural business is uh, one, it's, it's, it's a very nice one. It's a traditional on one side, but it's also very progressive on the other side. And if you see what's happening with a lot of companies, uh, they are getting more and more digital. And But they, do, they all have an internet connection. They all have an iPhone they, or, or at least a, a mobile phone. And yes, there are some who don't have it. But if you have a tech solution, maybe you should consider that farmers that are not ready or no, don't even have a digital uh, are not very digital yet um, and you cannot reach them online maybe you should reconsider are those my primary customers uh, for my tech solution uh, so that that's also something that who is your actual buyer should a farmer of with with 80 cows somewhere uh, far behind should that should he be your customer so i think that uh, Alexander, if you want to reach the uh, customers uh, use with a tech solution, think who do I want to reach? So you should not reach every farmer, but make sure you st focus. And then on different languages, yeah, well, uh, translate. Um, um, maybe uh, Google Translate can, can be a nice start, but then uh, if you use that, yeah, there are translation companies um, and, and uh, I, I think that a lot of companies uh, that we talk to have uh, uh, work with with local dealers and importers. So yeah, you should you should think about that if you, that's, that's something uh, that you really want to go for. Okay, thank you, Ivo. Um, and maybe uh, time for some last question, a very specific question, maybe uh, asked by, uh, as I already said, uh, Michael Paul Kramer. He asked, uh, could you elaborate? Uh, on implementing blockchain use uh, cases in agri-tech uh, marketing. Is it a question you can answer or is it a very specific, difficult question to answer? Uh, um, well, actually, uh, I, I used to, uh, I, I, I did not do anything with blockchain. Um, so I don't think that, that blockchain is a lot of use within the marketing yet. Um, and, and, and should yeah maybe one day um, if you want to know a lot about blockchain within Aquitech, um I, I, I do uh, have uh, 
a former company of me uh, is, is working in, in, in that specific sector. So I can send you uh, a link, uh, Michiel, uh, to, to, uh, to that company if you want to know more about that. Okay, so we'll, we will be sending, uh, 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 of course, uh, after this webinar, a, uh, a post and a thank you message to all of you who attended today. So we can uh, uh, also add uh, your uh, information, Ebo, your, uh, the way people can connect yeah. uh, outside of this, uh, this webinar. Um, I don't see any questions anymore coming in. So it's uh, uh, almost uh, 11 o'clock. So I think I will be wrapping it up now. Uh, 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 at this uh, this moment uh, for uh, for this webinar, uh, so thank you very much, uh, Ibo, and also of course Bastian for uh, for introducing this uh, interesting topic, and uh, also uh, all of you uh, who attended uh, uh, today. Um, thanks for helping out also uh, to the Oud uh, for arranging this uh, interesting uh, topic, and we'll be having some more webinars this year, of course, uh, on the IOF 2020 platform. Uh, so please look out for uh, for the next ones. And uh, again, thank you for joining us today and discussing with us and uh, have a good day. And as said, we'll be sending you uh, uh, some more information uh, about this webinar. And in, later on, it's, uh, it also will be posted. I, I see a question by Betul. Uh, the recording uh, will be sent afterwards. So um, all the information will be sent uh, to you. Thank you very much and uh, we keep in touch.